Rick Arndt and today I'm going to show you how to make this cedar sign. The sign is made with a router and as you can see the style of this sign is a smooth surface with inset letters that are painted inside. This is one of several styles that we use at hiswordinwood.com. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this sign starting with wood selection, the tools that are required, how to use the tools, and finally how to finish the project. So let's get started. I chose cedar for this project because it has very pretty grain and interesting color variations. Cedar is a very soft wood, extremely soft in fact, which in one sense makes it easy to carve. On the other hand, it is a very challenging piece of wood sometimes to carve because it's very brittle. Instead of coming off as nice fine sawdust, it wants to break off in chunks. In the last carving that I did, I was working with walnut and I was able to get razor thin pieces of uh, wood in between characters. But with this, not even a chance. I'm having a lot of problems on another carving that I'm working on right here getting any kind of fine detail because it wants to break off everywhere there's a point. Now one thing that you can look for in the wood is the grain itself. Even though a bold grain with wide uh, spaces between the grain pattern is attractive, it also means that the wood is extremely soft and the wood between the grain is almost like trying to cut through a coconut husk. Uh, it just wants to smush instead of cut cleanly. So in this particular piece of wood, I have a very wide space between the grain and it's giving me fits. But it's also an extremely pretty project when you're finished with it. People see that and they say, wow, that is just so pretty. So the piece of wood that I've selected for this project actually came from a local home improvement center and what it is is a fence picket and you have to really dig through a pile of wood to get a piece that's this nice as you can see there's virtually no defects in it at all and very pretty color when you get this type of wood from the home center it's oftentimes very wet because it's stored outside Pick out the two, three, maybe four pieces of wood that are most attractive and bring them home. Then clamp them together with small pieces of maybe half inch thick uh, straight wood between them to hold them apart. The wood between the boards is called stickers and it allows air circulation between the boards to allow them to dry more quickly. But as the wood dries, it's going to want to cup and twist and bow in this way and that and so what that's the purpose of the clamps is to hold that wood stiff while it's drying and then it'll be a nice board to use this piece has been in my shop for about two months now and it's very lightweight indicating it's ready to use so what we're going to do is cut it to length sand it smooth transfer the image to it and then start carving Okay, now the pattern that we're going to be using is 13 and a half inches long and my printer can only print 8 and a half by 11 paper so it doesn't fit on one sheet of paper. What we do is uh, just print out one side, in this case you can see it here that uh, I got part of the pattern on here but in order to get the rest of it I had to print it a second time. And so if you put these two together, something like that, it'd cover about the whole thing. So now what I want to do is I want to get, get rid of this white, white border where my printer didn't print. And it doesn't need to be near this uh, double thickness anyway. So I'm just going to cut it right down through this heart and right down through this letter like that. Now let's see if we can put this thing together nicely. So what we're really trying to do here is put it together in such a way that you can't really see where the joint is. 
So it's got to be lined up this way correctly and also this way because you don't want any kind of twist to it. It's got to be nice and straight. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take two pieces of this little blue tape, put one down here and one up here. They're going to get cut off. But what they're there for is to hold it in place while I take some glue. It doesn't have to be glue stick. I like the glue stick here because it I'll make a mess with it. But I just flip this over now and rub the glue stick or the glue, whatever, whichever you're using, onto the back side here. Flip it back over and smooth it down. It's as easy as that. And what we'll do is we'll transfer this image onto the, onto the wood using what's called graphite paper uh, or image transfer paper or if you're old enough you'll remember it being called carbon paper. That was in the days before they invented photocopiers. If you can remember back that far. I'm going to cut that off. And, uh, that way I won't have to use as much force with the pin when I'm transferring the image there. So, we now have our 13 and a half inch long template. Now, before I transfer the image onto this piece of wood, I, just, I noticed I had this little knot here that I want to take off. And so what I want to do is just cut off the end of this wood, just across like that. And I could do that on a table saw, but uh, I'm going to use this uh, miter saw and just make one, one nice gentle chop and should be ready to go. Miter saws are wonderful.